Would you like to be able to manage databases in the Nutanix database service from Kubernetes? Now you can. Nutanix has released the NDB Kubernetes Operator, allowing developers to manage PostgreSQL, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and MongoDB databases directly from Kubernetes. Hello, I'm David Teague, Technical Marketing Engineer, and welcome to Tech Bytes. Today, we're going to talk about the Kubernetes Operator for NDB. The operator will allow developers to manage databases directly from Kubernetes instead of relying on third-party and long manual processes to gain access to databases. As a result, the Kubernetes operator for NDB speeds up software development and can save you days or weeks of effort. So let's get started. We're going to get started by setting up our connection to NDB for the project that I'm working in. We're going to use OC, the OpenShift command line interface, to run all the scripts in this video. I have already set up a project in OpenShift called tme-ndb-demo. This will be designated by the namespace section in the YAML scripts we are using. Once this connection is set up in this project, you can reuse it, so you only need to do this once. The server will be the FQDN or IP address of your NDB server. We also pre-created an OpenShift secret for our credentials with the username and password for NDB. You can find examples and the NDB connection script on the NDB operator GitHub, which will be linked below. Let's run this script, and then we'll move on to provisioning a database. If I switch over to OpenShift and go to the NDB Server tab in the Operator section, we can see that the connection has been created. Let's provision a PostgreSQL DB for use for an app that we are developing. Here is the YAML script we will use to provision the new database. It will create a new database server VM for the database to run on. The NDB Service Operator lets the Kubernetes user do this, instead of relying on a DBA to do it but the database will have the same standards and customizations if the DBA provisioned it with NDB. You can find an example script on the NDB Operator GitHub page. The operator will look for out-of-the-box profiles included with NDB when provisioning or cloning a database. If an out-of-the-box profile is not found, it will give an error. If you specify a profile in a script, it will use that instead of the out-of-the-box profile. PostgreSQL is the only out-of-the-box software profile that comes with NDB. If you are using any of the other database engines supported by NDB, a software profile will need to be created. The cluster ID will be the Nutanix cluster you want to install the database on. And if you have multiple Nutanix clusters, you can reuse this script and just change the cluster ID, which can be retrieved from the NDB API Explorer. In our script, we have set our database instance name, database name, we specified the secret that we're going to use for database authentication, the initial size in gigabytes, and the time zone as well as the type of database, which in this case is Postgres. Now that we have the options we want set in the script, let's run it and see the results. If we open up OpenShift, we can see that the status is creating under the operator. And while we don't need to do it, we can head over to NDB and see what the progress is over there as well. When the NDB operator shows the status is ready, the database is ready to use. If we switch over to NDB, we can see the time it took to create the database, as well as the steps that it ran when creating the database VM and the database. If we switch over to OpenShift and go to Services, we can see the service the operator automatically creates when provisioning a database or a clone. The name of the service uses the custom resource metadata name followed by SVC as shown here. So when you are building an app that is using this database, you can just reference this service to access that database. I used the service for the PostgreSQL database that we provisioned earlier when deploying my app. We're going to log in to the app and see if it's working. It is working. However, if something was not correct and we wanted to make a change, we could delete that app and then reuse the same service. If we need to delete and redeploy the database, we can do that in a couple of different ways. From the Operator section in OpenShift, you can click on the Database tab, select the database, and choose Delete. Or I can run the Delete command from the command line. Either way you choose, the database will be deleted from NDB. And if we switch over to OpenShift, you can see that it shows the resource is being deleted. One of the many new features included in the release version of the NDB operator is the ability to create a time machine for data protection. We're going to see how that works by provisioning a MongoDB database with the time machine section specified. The provisioning script looks similar to the Postgres one. I'm using the same connection to the NDB server I created earlier, which is specified by the NDB ref line in the file. You can see that the type is set as MongoDB. I specified a specific compute profile, which sets the amount of CPU and memory for the database VM. You can specify software, network, database parameter, and Windows domain profiles for use with Microsoft SQL Server. Below that, you can see the time machine section, which holds the time I want the full snapshot to run, 
how often to do log backups, and when to take a monthly and quarterly snapshots. It also specifies the SLA to use in NDB and the name of the time machine to create, as well as how many full snapshots to take each day. Now that we've reviewed the script and the options, let's run it to provision the database. It would look much like the Postgres one did earlier. You can check the progress in OpenShift. Let's open up NDB to see what steps it will take. Now that the database has completed provisioning, let's head over to the Time Machine menu and look at the time machine we created for this database. On the left, you can see the details of the time machine, including when the last snapshot and log catch-up were ran. From the dropdown, the NDB administrator can roll back the database by restoring the source database. If we click on the snapshot sections to the left, we can see which snapshots have been taken. If we head into the data access management section, this is where an NDB administrator can set up replication to any other Nutanix clusters that NDB is connected to. These options give your database created from Kubernetes robust data protection. It also allows you to create clones of the database, which you can use for testing or data recovery. You can also create clones with the Kubernetes operator. So let's jump right in and create a clone from our OpenShift environment. We will start at our script editor, and you can see instead of a database instance section under spec, we now have a clone spec, which will only work if the is clone is set to true. We need to set the correct database type and choose a name for our database clone. Since we are creating this on the same Nutanix Cloud cluster as before, we can use that same cluster ID. However, as mentioned earlier, if snapshots are being replicated to other servers, you can create clones on those Nutanix Cloud clusters as well. We can set any specific profile, like we did when creating a new database. You will need to get the source database ID and the snapshot ID that you want to create the clone from, from the API Explorer in NDB. The snapshot ID can be from any specific time that NDB has taken a snapshot. Now that we have our script filled out the way we would like, let's run it to create the clone. If we go into the operator section, we can see that the clone is being created. You can create clones from the GUI if you like by choosing the is clone option. Clones can be used to test new developments, or if you've rolled out a new update to the database and something is not working, you could roll out a version of the database before the update to see if it was the database or the app. Similar to the case of database provisioning, a service will be created for the clone and you can use this service to access the database to see if the problem lies in the database. You can also use clones for data recovery by creating a clone and exporting the missing data to your production database. So that wraps up our look at the Kubernetes operator for NDB. The operator speeds up software development and can save you days or even weeks of effort. You can use the operator for NDB on your Kubernetes platform of choice, such as Red Hat OpenShift or Nutanix Kubernetes Engine, while benefiting from full database life cycle management provided by NDB, Nutanix's hybrid multi-cloud database as a service that simplifies database management. That concludes our video on the Nutanix database service operator for Kubernetes. If you'd like to learn more about NDB, check out the video displayed below. If you want to learn more about NDB and the service operator for Kubernetes, head over to Nutanix.com ndb.